Hello everyone and welcome to this video where we are continuing the build of the Alta train. Now I did work on it offline, I've made a lot of good progress, I'm going to showcase that to you and then we're going to move forward and see what other type of things we can add and make it even better. So first things first, I do want to mention that the addition of these sliding connector tracks actually prevent the trailer from kind of swinging back and forth. So what I'm going to do quickly is spawn it into the add-on here. I just put it right behind us. And then you'll see for the first time ever inside. So I know before all you say this is supposed to be a washroom, this train was never meant to be anything more than fiction based on real life. And I really like the idea of a cozy little kitchen, a break area with some windows. And of course, a little seating bench here with a TV. So if there's the engineer and conductor, they could come here and have a break. As you know, with most of my builds, I don't put a washroom. I just kind of tend to put a door for that some, somewhere. So that is not how real trains have it, but I do prefer this. And up here, I did do a little bit more decor. I do have to make these screens work, but I do like the view and how it looks. Also, there's a skylight down here, which again, some of you may or may not agree, but I like it. Anyway, back here, if the uh, third person needs to have a rest, this is kind of a bunk room, crew room, maybe for the big boss. And again, I know real trains don't have that there, but this is Alta. They have hot tubs on their <laughs> on their uh, oil platforms. Now over here we have one single little battery which is going to power this thing. Which is kind of funny because over here we have a massive six cylinder massive uh, engine here. And uh, I tried supercharging it with the larger cylinders 3x3. That does not work so well. But what does work is the ability to give us a good amount of power. So what we're going to do now is start up the engine, turn on the reverser, and I did add the arrow keys or W and S for the power so I can give us throttle backwards. And all my microcontrollers are on the roof right now. I didn't actually do anything, do anything with them. We'll turn the reverser down, give us full throttle. So what I didn't do, I did not do anything with the uh, microcontrollers yet other than tweak them up. I've added something that was recommended to me, which is sort of to give it a slow acceleration rather than the fast acceleration that we've been seeing otherwise. But you could see now that we're gaining speed. Our battery is kind of hovering at that. Uh, it's dropping a little bit, which is less than ideal. But what is great is our generator is producing 933 Stormworks watts, so a good amount of power, at a very low RPS. I do like how the engine sounds at 10 RPS. Also, it will waste less electricity, but what is worthwhile to note is that it seems, while it did work under a uh, unloaded instance, it does not work, as far as this battery is concerned, for a loaded circumstance so i do have to gear this up a little bit more hopefully if we can get this to a bit higher of an rpms then our batteries will not be draining on us so when i fire up the engine now and turn up the power you'll see that this will go up to very high numbers so it should hit like 1200 at full throttle. Let's see if that 1200 is enough to charge the battery. So I've intentionally put the small battery back there because I want it to be quick to charge up, as you can see here. So now we're charging it up. As we're pulling this load, we're gaining speed. We should hit that 20, that 20 mark, 20 meters per second. Again, the 1200 with the 14 RPM RPS is a little high you can see in here but it is working at decent efficiency we'll have to check on the fuel situation but it is it is encouraging that we've now hit 22 meters per second even with the brick here and 
that our generator is keeping up with this sort of throttle. Now, if I throttle down, it's going to detune this so it actually turns down the generator. And you can see now it's no longer making power, it's losing power for that amount. So this may actually be something I put into a PID. But of course, with full throttle, we are charging up our battery. In fact, we're doing a little better. We're charging it up pretty fast. So I have to find that median ground where instead of dropping down when I do this, it stalls out to like, well, this is fine. It's still somewhat charging up. You could see it's charging, but if I give it a slight bit of throttle, even like 25%, it's not really keeping up. So this is probably good for a PID to, to balance it out and we'll see if that works. Currently inside the microcontroller, we just have the manual throttle lever attached to this clamp. So at zero, it's at actually 15% throttle and at full, it's full. And then it goes into the sequence that I've built. Uh, but what is interesting to note is that uh, we have no control over the battery. The battery is only a function of what is coming into the microcontroller rather than affecting the throttle and making it end up having full battery. So we'll see if a PID can fix that. We'll place the PID here. And of course the process variable will be the battery. The set point, we want it to be one. So it obviously needs to be fully charged. That's the idea here. And then we want to attach the key. So the key will start this process. Now I don't know if I actually have a key or if I just have this so-called generator start override because I'm using a microcontroller that I built. So I think the generator start override is my actual key input. So now that all goes into the PID and then that will dictate the throttle of our engine but I don't want it to solely dictate the throttle of our engine. I also want it. I also want our manual lever to to join in on that. So first, I'm just going to try a simple addition here. So it'll actually just be my manual throttle lever added to this, and then it'll go into the clamp. I still want to use the clamp because the clamp is going to dictate the minimum throttle that's always going to provide us with some charge. Now we saw that at the zero throttle in essence, when we had this 15%, it was charging very slowly. So that was actually perfect. And now we'll see if we can get this working. To do the full test properly, we have to have the towing. So we can't just have our locomotive without anything. We need it to actually be towing this trailer. So once it is connected, then we're going to go off forward. So full speed ahead. And you can see now the generator is ramping up and we're hitting that one mark. And there you have it. So now we've hit one at full throttle, which isn't anything amazing. We've done that in the past. But the question comes, if I turn this down, what will happen? So let's say I put 94. So you can see it kind of tries. So I may need to, instead of this, oh, it's not rebounding fast enough. Now remember, I didn't set any parameters on this PID. So for sure it may need some additional information. Well, for sure it does. There you go. So it's now dropping off real fast here. Now I'm just fine tuning the PID. So we'll see if we can get it to that level. So if I give an add throttle now, and we are towing the trailer by the way. So we are at one, if I turn down this, we actually continue to have a full, a full uh, battery. I did set it to kind of aim for the battery to have 1.1. 1 .1. 
So if I give it 14% throttle, it should ramp this up to the point where we start to gain. But I don't see it right now. It's still dropping, in fact. Now if I give it a little more, 26%, do we start to gain or no? So it is a bit of fine-tuning, you have to keep in mind. So at one thro at full throttle we are gaining, and then when I reduced it, we were still gaining. But it does take a little bit of time for this to adjust, so you can see here, we're st still able to keep that one. Uh, and it slips away. Okay, more fine-tuning. It seems to react okay now. 48% throttle, we're still getting full electricity, so no matter what, we're setting it now here. Oh, we started to lose it a little there. It may only be because I throttled up too fast for the generator to keep up, but now you can see that it is keeping up, and we are gaining that speed, which is nice. If I throttle down, we should see the RPS start to drop off. But it very well could be because I set it to 1.1 that it won't start to drop off until I hit a much lower number. Or it could just be doing its job. So a little bit of fine tuning here and there, but overall this is kind of what I have in mind for the generator portion of the diesel electric. Of course, the actual motors or that are pushing the wheels, they're just working on a very, very basic system, and it's a clamp. I was told that a clamp is the best way to do it, and you could see that we're ending up with pretty nice results even with that simple clamp and simple microcontroller. Did a little more fine tuning and now we'll see if this works or not. So that's at sitting at a standstill, what we're getting. And now if I give it a little bit throttle, 11% throttle, we could see our electrics not dropping off. It takes a second for it to catch, it seems, especially if I do a big increase like that. But we're at full, full throttle now. And it's keeping up. We are at one, one. We're full, full battery, 100% battery. If I turn it down, we should see the RPS on the engine or on the generator start to drop as well. Yeah, it does. Not as much, but it could be tied together perfectly. So it could actually be that we need that amount of power in order to get to full potential. The overwhelming bit I find is from all different sides talking about the different types of connectors and systems and the slaving of multiple locomotives and stuff. But the basic system that I find of these locomotives is pretty simple. It comes down to having a generator. It comes down to having the motors, whether they're here or above, and tying that system in together. So the framework is relatively simple, at least from what I've seen. But now what we're going to have to do is adjust the main train microcontroller to allow for multiple units, to allow for the actual connectors on the front and back, to send data, to pair up with other locomotives and all that other good stuff. One thing I noticed is that they all have some kind of detail here next to the wheels. So we're just going to go ahead and do a little bit fancying up of this area as well as above, just so it doesn't look purely open like this. It would be much nicer to have a realistic type of system here. So, well, realistic enough or rather just detailed something like that and I'll kind of add little bits of things here and there I'm quite happy with how that looks and now if we hop aboard here 
open the door and make our way through here. I do like how it's coming together. The next step, of course, up here is all the displays, or are all the displays. I have to do that. I have to clean this up. And then it's going to be the microcontroller to get the, uh, you know, pairing with other locomotives, pairing with the trailers or cars, and kind of making the train go from there. But I'm super happy with the progress. I've actually gotten a fair bit of motivation ever since I've uh, gotten to this level just because I'm liking how it's looking. I'm liking how it's operating and working and everything. So thank you for watching. Thank you for the support. I really appreciate all the comments and feedback that I'm getting. Like I said, maybe it's not going to be to everybody's preference with some of the things that I'm adding, but I would want it to tie in with the rest of my organizations. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned for more. And as always, happy stormworksing, everyone.